Welcome back to Pinoy Bounce. And right now we're going to talk about player highlight of the week. Uh, Norman Powell is averaging 20 points, uh, 20.5 points a game and shooting 63% of court. And before the injury, basically the death of Raptors is kind of bad right now. Like everyone's getting hurt. Uh, Van Fleet is still out. So what do you guys think about the injury? Obviously next man up, but everyone is hurt. So who's the next <laughs> man up? So f Fred Van Fleet. Marc Gasol, Norman Powell. That's it's, really rough, and that's what's going to really make me nervous for these coming for next for next week game, especially for. Boston. They did mention. They did mention that Marc Gasol is going to miss weeks. Weeks. weeks let alone so. hamstring, right? Hamstring. Yeah. And hamstring. And then um, Norman Powell's shoulder was the left shoulder is when he injured you. The one that injured you and that cost him a 20, long time. Yeah, twenty-one games. So, yeah. um, it's just sad to see. Like Norman's been, is, has been gaining the momentum. Right? Yeah, it was an up and down season for him. The past he, like he, everyone, this was his, yeah. This, this is like he, he finally had something to prove. Like before, we would all call him, you know, the one of the players that was so inconsistent. Like when he had his highs, that's what we trade for him. When he had his lows, it's just like, you know, tr trade this guy or whatever. Like mm. we would always bash on him for these kind of things. So now that he's at that, he's coming into that all time high, you know, with a career high of 33 points at one point, or just against Orlando. Next, you know, he's. Consistent. Con yeah, he's been he consistent was, he, ever since yeah, that. The momentum. So, the, like, like what I said, it's just really sad to see that, like, you know, you're coming into an all-time high, you reach this injury, and then where's that going to take you after? Like, where's your men like mentality? It's going to be like somewhat of like a mental block for you mm -hmm. when it comes to these kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. I just hope it doesn't bring him down. I, you know, I wish him like mm -hmm. the best for like a speedy mm -hmm. recovery for him. You know, he's he's been a, a great asset to the sure. team and everything too. Now that he's starting. I think it's going to help that he has veteran players like Lowry, who's gone through that kind of injury with his back, his thumb. Yeah. So to have that kind of mentorship and veteran presence who has gone through that situation, I think it's going to help him too. And I mean, Fred's also going through the same thing. Yeah. He was hitting, like he's playing so good this season and then the injury comes and then all of a sudden, right? So it helps that they do have a player like Ibaka who's there to kind of shoulder the low and Chris Boucher is having such good development. Yeah. I think this is also going to help players like Terrence Davis and, and Ron Day to kind of step up. So next man up, like he said, so it helps to have a really deep squad to, to really kind of shoulder through the season. I think just right? because um, now that we speak of with Gasol being out because of his hamstring, he was like technically that defensive anchor for us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Ibaka can give it to us uh, with the pick and rolls offensively and everything, but I just feel like we're not going to be as defensively sound without Gasol, right? Mm -hmm. So um, next man up, I think, you know, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, even though he's not that big, as compared to Gasol, he can he, play a, a pretty solid, you know, six, seven center, everyone, right? Too. Him and Chris Boucher. Yeah, can Boucher kind of too, as well. So, I mean, they can, they can definitely step up along with Terrence Davis Jr. Um, I think my only question with Nick Nurse's choice is put a starting Patrick McCaw. So, mm -hmm. what do you guys think on that? Starting Patrick McCaw. Yeah, like mm -hmm. he apparently he puts a lot of trust into that into that kid. Well, he can play defense. He, he does, but he's just a, I just yeah. feel like he's a little bit. I think yeah. you just need to, because um, what happens is. He had, uh, I mean, three finals. Three rings. Three what rings with him. Well, we, didn't we talk there. about this too? Yeah, we were what, just talking about this. So, Where you have an amazing resume but don't know how to showcase <laughs> for it. Yeah. Like, it's also because he was starting to just hit his stride when they won the second championship. Yeah. And he wanted to get paid. He just like he chose to get paid. So then that's when he kind of lost the opportunity that he had with the Golden State Warriors when he's really finding that stride. He was going to be that kind of second uh, tier off the bench player for Golden State to kind of offset Clay or offset uh, Steph Curry. So that opportunity kind of went down to Jim when he took in more money, tried to play for Cleveland, tried and to then play he for got, the team. <laughs> he, got in. So, he couldn't do the deal, right? And yeah. Then he got, yeah, yeah. So but, at this point, that's where he's at. Hey, there's no other player now. Van Fleet and Norman Powell is out of there. He can take that sh shooting guard position. He's more of a combo guard and really see what he can really do, make a name for himself, and then that I don't trust know. is there. I just feel like I have, I see more versatility in um, Terrence Davis Jr. than mm -hmm. I do see in Pat McCall. Yeah, so yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like he's more volatile as compared mm -hmm. to. I feel like it's like um, McCall's 
offensive like plays are quite mediocre. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly there. It's or, not as polished. It's yeah. not no. It's not as clean well, as like. But the thing I is, I just feel pressured because maybe. he played behind Steph Curry, and yeah, then he true. went to the team, and then every time like uh, I understand where he's coming from because as soon as you you play behind someone who's really great and it's time to shine for you mm -hmm. you overthink you ever mm -hmm. end up like dribbling the ball too much or like passing it the wrong way or it so, could yeah. be like some like a case for Kyle Lowry you know you, yeah. you came from nothing from Houston and you become the superstar yeah. there it's the same de development for Ronde uh, Ronde Hollis Jefferson right kind of in the shadows in Brooklyn mm -hmm. but is now kind of shining defensively here in Toronto but it's different when it's I know uh, but like I feel like it's just it, I know it's obviously different with yeah. Steph Curry <laughs> <laughs> I mean why yeah. like yeah, coming I mean, out of it for sure but I'm just saying like this is like Toronto Raptors is a, go is a good opportunity for your time to shine and for you to bring your name for yourself, right? Everyone bashes on us for being that city anyways, so why not represent it? <laughs> Nick Nurse can find a way to make him play because the way Nick Nurse plays, like, yeah. he trusts like, yeah. this young guy. So, like, this, and then he finds his gems out of nowhere. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, what the frick? Yeah, what <laughs> it's crazy. Man. I think if they do play big, I think there's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind them playing big if they do go with... Uh, Lowry, Terrence Davis, OG, Pascal, and Boucher or Ibaka. That's not a bad lineup to kind of go. We also take in OG spin mm. moves from oh games against Detroit. So I'm yeah. just like, I'm just reminding it's like a little mini Pascal Siakam. Yeah. Are they just like you beating see up that each other? You hit yeah. from like yeah. the logo, almost at the logo. Yeah. The confidence it's is against just, um, Dwayne Casey too. So, right. <laughs> yeah. so he must feel good. He's so. just the kind of player that you know. He reminds me really of Kawhi, like a low key Kawhi kind of player that just gets buckets, gets ball done if you need to. And I'm excited to see what he's going to develop next year because that three pointer was key for him because he was so inconsistent with it. He didn't sh sh shoot it that well, and now that he's like shooting it at like, I mean, unreal range, like uh, the same kind of progression that Pascal did when. Capasso came into the league and barely shoot to like now being such a threat. Now, now he can do the actual move that he does best, which is getting into the lane, swerving into it, and doing his spin moves. So, so it, it basically, this basically just give experience to everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Serge Ibaka had 25 and 13. And the last time he had yeah. that was back in 2013 against the Golden State Warriors in November 14. Mm -hmm. and a year before that, he had... Uh, well, I mean, in 2012, of December, so around November and December, he, it's time to shine for him. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, that's the last time he scored 23, and I mean, 25 points and 13 rebounds. So that's good. That's, mm -hmm. mm. that's all we got, guys, for all about the Raptors. James, and this one for us. Uh, today's Hoops Mario Sip is Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> this guy is trying to do a Euro step, but he looked like Dr. J. <laughs> Big Dr. J. So check this out. <laughs>